Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Youth Man. In this video, we're going to be taking two subwoofers going head to head in a slug fest. And we're going to be using the UMIK1 microphone as well as the REW or Room EQ Wizard software to compare them. And the two subwoofers that we're going to do a slug fest with is Klipsch's R115SW and SVS's brand new PB3000. Now, before we get into the video, if you're into home theater audio and video, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. Alright guys, so as you can see, we've got the laptop set up here, connected via USB to a USB microphone, the UMIK-1 microphone, and then coming out of the laptop to my Marantz SR8012. And so we're going to be using that system to send some test tones and some frequency sweeps to both of these subwoofers, checking the graph to see which one has the better performance in my theater room. Now, before we get into the actual measurements, I want to take a few moments just to talk about and kind of compare side by side the specs for each one of these subwoofers. So let's take a look. The Klipsch R115SW has a 15 inch ceramic woofer. It's powered by a 400 watt continuous 800 watt peak amplifier. At the bottom of the sub, it has a front firing slot port. Then if we turn around to the back, we'll find an auto on and off switch, phase adjustment, low pass crossover, gain control, a line in, as well as a wireless port. The frequency response goes down to 18 hertz. It measures 21.5 inches high by 19.5 inches wide and 22.3 inches deep, weighs 75.4 pounds, and it retails for $899, but currently is on sale for $699. The SVS PB3000 features a 13 inch woofer, an 800 watt continuous 2500 watt peak amplifier. Down at the bottom, it has dual 3.5 inch ports. On the rear of the sub, it has the same controls as the R115, auto on off, phase, low pass crossover, gain, line in, and wireless port. One thing that the SVS does have that the Clips sub does not is the SVS app. And with the app, you have a lot more control over the subwoofer and its performance. The app includes three presets, room gain compensation, a three band parametric EQ, as well as variable port tuning modes, which allow you to change from sealed and ported design. Now the frequency responses determine whether or not you have it sealed or ported, in standard mode, the frequency response goes down to 16 hertz, and in sealed mode, it will go down to 18 hertz. The PB3000 measures 21.9 inches high by 18.3 inches wide and 23.5 inches deep. It weighs 82.2 pounds and retails for $13.99. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do before I get to any testing is I wanna turn off Odyssey. And so right now I'm in the setup menu in the Marantz SR8012. We're gonna come down to audio and hit enter. And then we're gonna come down here to Odyssey. And right here it says multi EQ, it's enabled. And basically it's set to reference. We're gonna click okay. And we're gonna go over here to off. So that turns off any kind of equalization that Odyssey has run during previous tests. So we're gonna go back to our main menu so now that we've turned off Odyssey, we can go ahead and exit the menu. All right, so we have REW, the Room EQ Wizard software opened up. Now I've already done all the calibration. I've told REW that we're using the UMIK1 microphone. I've also told it that we have a calibration file for that microphone. And so in this video, it won't be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use REW. I've got other videos on this channel that go through some of that. 
So the first thing I want to do, I have the Klipsch R115 SW subwoofer connected. And so I'm going to come up here to the top of REW and it has a built-in SPL meter. So I'm going to click on that. And then we're going to come over here and I'm going to click record and I'm going to set a minimum and a maximum. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the Marantz setup menu and I'm going to come down to speakers, manual, come down to levels. And basically what I want to do is I want to find out how loud is the subwoofer playing at negative 25 on the receiver. So I'm going to go to test tones and come down to subwoofer one. Now you won't be able to see it on the screen, but I'm able to see it on the computer. Now the other thing I want to mention is I do have the receiver in two channel stereo. We don't need a center channel running. We don't need Atmos speakers uh, playing. We just want the front two speakers and the subwoofer. And so the DB meters register in about 70 decibels. And so that's going to be, so that's going to be our volume that we're going to set the PB3000 when it comes to its turn. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. We're going to exit the setup menu. And so here you can see that DB meter. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And so now we're ready to go ahead and take our first measurements. We're going to come up here to measure. Now you can see up here, I've got the frequency starting at 17 Hertz and it's going to run a frequency sweep up to 200 Hertz. Now, again, I'm not going to go through how to set all of this up. I've already done that. I've already checked the levels. And so I'm just going to click start measuring. All right, so here we have our first frequency sweep. And you can see here, it's definitely not a flat frequency response in my room. There's been no calibration. There's been no uh, equalization using, um, using Odyssey. And so this is just where it's at. And so basically what this is showing us is to the far left of the graph is the frequency. So this is 17 Hertz. So the R115 SW played 95 decibels at 17 Hertz. And you can see there was a little dip here. So it went down to about 92. Well, I guess that's about 93. You can click on it and see exactly. So that's 92.9 decibels at 22.9 Hertz. You can see I have a dip here. So this is what we call a null at 29 or basically 30 Hertz. We've got an even further null at 35 Hertz. And so, and then right here, we've got a, a peak at say 50 Hertz, 55 Hertz. So anyway, that is our first measurement. And so basically what I want to do is I'm going to keep increasing the volume on the receiver by three decibels. And each time we're going to run REW again, and we're wanting to see when does the subwoofer basically run out of gas? When does it start compressing? So the first thing I want to do is I want to name this R115SW, and this is the first test. So now I'm going to take the receiver and I'm going to increase it. So we're at negative 25, so we're going to go up to negative 22. So that's increasing the receiver by three decibels. We're going to come back up here to measure and we're going to hit start measuring. All right, so here we have our second measurement. So again, I'm going to come up here and name this R115SW2nd. And so basically what we're seeing here is it increased in volume, which is understandably because we increased the volume on the receiver. And what we can see is this second measurement follows the exact same pattern as the previous measurement, the first one, which is this red line. And so this subwoofer has not reached compression. It basically hasn't run out of gas yet. And so we're going to keep increasing this by three decibels until we see some major, basically bending of this line. And so let's go into the receiver again. We're going to go from, we were at negative 22. So now we got to go to negative 19 decibels. So we just increased the receiver three more decibels. We're going to come up to measure and start measuring.
So again, we're going to come over here. We're going to name this R115SW third. And taking a look at this measurement, it looks exactly the same. It's just three decibels higher. And so everything's good here. So we're going to continue. So we're at negative 19. So we need to go to negative 16 decibels on the receiver. Oh, I went too far. Let's go back to negative 16. There we go. So we're going to come up to measure and start measuring. All right, so basically, take a look right here. You see how this green line almost touches this orange line. So we have reached what we call compression. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and call this R115SW compression. And then I'm gonna come down here to the bottom and I'm gonna turn off this layer. So this one right here, this green one, because that's when it actually had compression. So I want to get the previous one, the one right before compression, and use that as our measurement. So I'm going to turn off the compression curve. And I'm also going to turn off the first and the second measurement. And so we're left with just the third measurement, which is the one right before compression. So that is the R. 115SW. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and I'm going to swap out the R115 with the SVS PB3000 and put it in its exact location and we'll pick back up the video in just a moment. Okay so I have replaced the R115SW with the SVS PB3000 so it's in the same exact location as the clip subwoofer was. We're going to come up here to the SPL meter I'm going to click record and I'm going to go back into the setup menu on the Marantz, go down to speakers, manual, come down to levels, test tone, come all the way down to subwoofer. And we're going to make sure that this is set to 70 decibels as well. So I'm in the SVS app and it's set to negative 10. So I need to increase this to about negative six. And negative six puts us right at 70 decibels on the dB meter. So let's go ahead and exit this. And we'll go ahead and close the SPL meter. All right, so now we're ready to take our first measurement on the PB3000. So let me just make sure, yep. So our volume is set at negative 25 like we did starting out with the 115. So let's click start measuring. All right, so this one here is the SVS. So let's go ahead and name that SVS PB3000, and I'll call it first. So we're going to continue just like we did with the R115. So we're going to go up to negative 22 decibels. So we're increasing the receiver volume three decibels. We're going to come up to measure and start measuring. Actually, what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna turn off the 115 SW layer. That way we don't get confused. All right, so we can see for the most part, it's following along the same. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is right here, so there's equal distance here, and there's equal distance here, but it almost appears like right here, there may be starting to, we may be starting to see some compression. So I'm gonna to continue to go up, go up another three decibels, so we're at negative 22, so that'll put us at negative 19. And we're gonna come up to, actually before we do that, let's go ahead and name this. SVS PB 3000 second. Let's come up to measure and start measurement.
All right, so we can definitely see some major compression taking place right here. So we know that that's definitely compression. So I'm gonna call this SVS PB3000 compression. And we're gonna go ahead and turn off that layer. And then we're going to turn off the first measurement, which is this bottom one. So we're gonna use that blue line Again, there may have been compression right here, but it was definitely at the very beginning of that. So I'm gonna leave that one. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn back on the third measurement, which was for the R115SW, which was the one right before compression. And let's see how the PB3000 compares to the R115SW. Okay, so if we take a look at the differences here, we can see that the orange line represents the R115, the clip subwoofer. And right above it is the SVS PB3000. And so during these lower frequencies, so we're looking at about 30 hertz down to 17 hertz, you can clearly see that the SVS PB3000 has more output. The R115 produced 100.2 at 24.52 hertz and if I go right up here and click right there so we went from 102 I'm sorry so we went from 100.2 on the clips to 102.9 so basically three decibels louder on the SVS PB3000 now to gain three decibels you either have to double the power of the amplifier or you can add a second subwoofer. So from what this tells me, just on these lower frequencies, it would take two Klipsch R115s to equal the output of one PB3000 subwoofer. Now along 40 hertz up to say, pretty much all the way over here to 80 hertz, they're pretty much on par. I mean, there's a little bit of difference here, maybe one or two decibels, but definitely those are a lot closer. But here's where the biggest difference is going to be in those lower frequencies. And honestly, that's quite impressive for a 13 inch subwoofer to outperform a 15 inch subwoofer. Now I'm wondering if the three decibel increase that we're seeing right here is a result of the amplifier. Now remember what I said at the beginning that the SVS has pretty much about twice the amplifier than the clip subwoofer. And when we double the amplifier power, we gain three decibels in volume. And so maybe that's a result of that. I'm not sure. It may just be the subwoofer's performance. So I'll post this graph on my website at youthmanreviews.com if you guys want to kind of take a look at it a little bit more detail. I know in the video it may be harder to see, especially if you're viewing this video on a mobile device. All right, so there you have this slugfest between the Klipsch R115SW and the SVS PB3000. Now, honestly, guys, that is pretty impressive that the 13-inch subwoofer basically had more extension and higher output in those lower frequencies than the larger 15-inch subwoofer. And so I'd love to hear what you guys think. What is the reason from that? Is the SVS just a better subwoofer? Does it perform better down low? Is it because of the larger amplifier? Now I've posted links to both of these subwoofers down in the description below if you're interested in purchasing either one of these. And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.